അതിൽ രാഷ്ട്രീയം അതിൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും തീക്ഷ്ണമായ താപകളോടുള്ള കാഴ്ചപ്പാടിൽ മാറ്റം വന്നിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ പോലും വിത്തുകളെ പൂർണ്ണമായിട്ട് ഉപേക്ഷിക്കാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിത്തും ശാസ്ത്രം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എല്ലാവരും പറയുമായിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങളെ എഡ്രസ് ഇല്ലാത്ത പിള്ളേരാണ് people used to tell my mother even when i was 16 17 and even no good serious christian boy will ever marry her i learned very young to say i don't want any goddamn serious christian boy to marry me <laughs> you know when i was um, once i went to a and 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 my mother used to maybe she was one of the few mothers in the world who used to tell me don't get married i don't want to get married and I took that quite seriously and so I got married a few times. But uh, she once took me to a meeting where there were a lot of rich Syrian Christian women with diamonds that were supposed to be discussing dowry. It turned out to be a discussion about how to give their daughters dowry even though that was not such a great thing to be doing. So my mother was shouting at them and you know, so I said, but if you want to give your daughter some something then why don't you just give her something why do you have to uh, connect it with marriage to give her something so so this lady told me no she will be brought up to be bold and bold women can never have a happy marriage so i said that's not true you know i was brought up to be bold and i have had several happy marriages <laughs> so this is this is the truth you know that i'm not somebody who has just only suffered and fought i am a woman who has insisted that we have the right to be happy we have the right to be free we have the right to love people and then stop loving them also we have the right to do what the hell we want to do you know so this has a lot to do with the way i write when when i was Of course I left home when I was 17 my mother and I were you know I mean, that's a long story but we when she died last last year some of her students asked me for the school magazine to uh, they asked me what my relationship with my mother was like and I said it was the very relationship between two nuclear powers <laughs> like we were careful and respectful of each other but i left home when i was 17 i was studying architecture and i basically lived independently i put myself through college i worked my way to and um, every now and then you know people used to tell her that oh you know your daughter she's so and so's mistress or so and so something so when i wrote the god of small things and i got a very big advance for that uh, the next man who told my mother that no serious christian boy will marry her and she's so and so's mistress i just faxed him my bank account details and said you know that you can be my mistress if you want that is in this place as me as a writer but what i want to say to you today is you know that the last 25 years that i've been writing i have you know you know written about globalization about displacement uh, about rising fascism in this country but today we are in a different phase and you know in kerala do not able to understand it because you're still in a place which is relatively intelligent relatively politically aware but in the rest of the country something has gone into a new chapter i'm not just talking about elections or who's going to be in the next government something has gone very wrong I just want to say a few things, you know. 
take things. I have so many friends, both here in Canada, in India, outside India, who are feminists, who have talked about the history of violence against women, who have talked about the history of the use of rape as a weapon of war. Today we are in a situation where women are justifying rape, where women are telling men to rape other women. I'm talking about not just my group. I'm talking about so many cases, whether it's in Hathras, whether it was in JNK, uh, where depending on who is raping who, the women stand up for that community. This means we've gone psychotic. There's something very wrong. We have a situation where in uh, Haryana recently, you have people who are accused of murder, of burning two Muslim men alive, leading a religious procession. You have a situation where the police are handing over women to a mob to be raped. You have a situation where a railway protection force officer is walking down bogies, shooting Muslims, and saying you must vote for Modi. And it's a mistake to think this person is mad, this person is silly, this person is just absorbing all the propaganda day and night that's coming out at him. So we are in a place where really it's a different phase altogether. I live in Delhi. I am so scared on the road. One little thing happens. I'm 50 men with orange stars will come. They will know who I am. You know? They can, and I'm just not talking about me, but imagine if you're a Muslim. You, 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 you might have a parking problem that can end in your death, in your lynching. You might be just going home from Delhi to Aligarh to see your parents, you, end up, you can end up there. This is the country that we are living in now. And this is the shame, the shame that we are not saying anything. Manipur, I would like to say that there's a civil war going on. It's not a civil war. It's a kind of ethnic cleansing because the center is complicit. The state is partisan. The security forces are split between one partisan lot, the police, and the others with no, with no chain of command. It's a border state. There's a huge drug trade. There's, there's underlying it a religious conflict between the Kupis who are mostly Christian and the others. The church is also being divided. And from Manipur to Haryana to all the other states that are going to stand for election up, except a fuse is being lit. I mean, while I have this podium, I, I think the Kerala government should try and help in Manipur. It should send the fact-finding committee. It should send relief. But we don't even know how to help because we don't know what's going on there. The internet is shut. This, I mean, it's like, I was thinking, you know, there's a rumor that the prime minister has resigned, but he doesn't know where to submit his resignation letter because people are too scared to receive it. But that man is missing. There's a war, women are being raped, paraded naked, squatter colonies are being burnt, Muslims are having cross marks put on their door, they are fleeing. And he's tweeting, I had a fun last night for dinner. This is the prime minister. You know, I don't think any of us should be in any doubt about his waters waiting, even just outside the borders of our state, waiting to come in. Sometimes when I come to Canada, I think, you know, it's, it's so wonderful to be here, but do people know, do people know that the fire is burning so close? You know, we have 
a different universe here. It's a, it's a beautiful universe. But it's being threatened, you know. And, and, and I, I can't tell you how dangerous the situation is. We are only hearing the words extermination, annihilation. These are open words now on the streets of Manipur, on the streets of Haryana. And high rate, that's what they are saying about Muslims, about Kutis. This language is not even secret anymore. It's not some small group of people. They are saying it openly on the streets. People are openly going to cinema halls, watching Kashmir files and saying we should rape Muslim women. People are openly on the streets with swords, with guns. There was that man, one of the men who led the march into um, if you look in Haryana, he said, he said, aap log tayar ho jao, tumhara damad aaraya. Means, your son-in-law is coming. <laughs>